Hey guys, Jackie here. So today I'm going to be doing the final part of my card review. It's all the cards that I haven't um, mentioned in my previous videos. So, let's get straight into it. Starting with Jade Beermoth. 6 mana 3 6 Taunt, Battlecry, Summon a Jade Golem. So, in a Jade Druid deck, obviously you're going to be playing this card. And I think it's good, like it's nice that it's defensive because you're probably going to be ramping the first couple of turns and you'll pro inevitably fall behind on the board and obviously you're just going to be playing i mean you're just going to play this in any jade golem deck you just want as many jade golems as you can um and the fact that taunt is nice like you're basically playing say twilight guardian as a four mana three six taunt um which is great like a four mana three six taunt is great so you're basically spending two mana for a jade golem which is fine like, two mana for a Jade Golem is, is fine. Um, most likely at this point in the game, it'll be like a 2-2 a two -two or a 3-3. Three -three, but, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it, I like this card. It, it's, it, it's not, like, overly flashy, but I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be solid in Jade Golem decks. Uh, yeah, I like it. Vitman Sensei. Sensei. 5 mana, 4-5. Battlecry, give a friendly beast, plus two, plus two. So, right. <laughs> like, it's, what it's doing is good. Like, you're essentially getting six, seven worth of stats for five mana. But in Beast Druid, you're going to be playing Strangled Old Tigers. You're going to be playing Druid of the Claws. That's already four, five drops, which... Is a fair amount for a like for an an, an aggressive deck, um, which Beast Druid generally is. I mean, you can build it more aggressive or more mid rangey, but uh, it feels like the only time this is ever going to be good is when you get like Coin Strangle Tiger and then play this the turn after. But like, don't get me wrong, what it's doing is is strong, but. If you're playing this card, you, it feels like you're going to have to have like a slightly higher curve and it's going to slow the deck down and make the deck more clunky. Um, so, I mean, I'd definitely give it a go in Beast Druid because what, it, what it's doing is powerful, but it's just like how often can you get the buff off? Like, can you... If you can consistently get the buff off and it's... and your curve isn't being like hurt too much, then yeah, it's great. But my concern is that six, five drops is probably too much. Um, would you play this? I mean, you're always going to play Strangle Thorn Tiger. Would you play this over Druid of the Claw? No, I don't think you would. Um, I mean, maybe you play, like, one of these in a Beast Druid, something like that. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it's nice that they're still bringing out stuff that's good for Beast Druid, but, um, not overly powerful, but a card that you can definitely consider putting in Beast Druid. Maybe as a one-off. Yeah. Celestial Dream, a 3 mana 3 3 battle cry. If a friendly minion has 5 more attack, game plus 2 plus 2. So, on turn 3, you're pretty much never going to be playing this card. Um, it's way more of a late game 3 drop where, like, you play a. You have a big minion on the board already, or you play a big minion and then play this. Which just seems. not great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one thing about Druid is that they don't have that many good 3-drops. Um, like, the 3-mana slot is often kind of empty. But, uh, what deck are you even going to be playing this in? I don't know. Like, there'd be, I mean, you could have Druid, like, say, like, Beast Druid, you, like, coin the 3-2 stealth, and then use Mark of Yashiraj on it turn 2, and then you have a 5-4, and you play this on turn 3. But no, it's not going to happen. I don't I, I don't think this card is that good. I think it's too hard to get the buff off. And even when you get the buff off, it's not even... It's not that worth it. Like, if you're playing this in the late game, it's just like a 3 mana 5 5 later in the game. It's just like, eh. Like, if you play it on th turn 3 and get a, th turn, a 3 mana 5 5 on turn 3, that's amazing. But it's never really going to happen. So, no. Nah. Don't really like this card. Jade Blossom, 3 mana, summon a Jade Golem, gain an empty mana crystal. Definitely a great card. Definitely going to be playing two of these in a Jade Golem deck. Um, 
Like one of the issues with Druid is like a three drops. Now you can go like Coin Wild Growth turn one, and then Jade Blossom turn two, and then on turn three you have five mana. Um, you can use your Azure Drake or Nourish or whatever. So yeah, really like this card. You you don't get a coin. Uh, I mean, you don't get a excess mana if you use this at ten mana, which is probably a good thing because you're already getting a Jade Golem. So it'd probably be it would, it would probably be too good if you got excess mana, seeing as you're getting a Jade Golem as well. But um, yeah. Great for a Jade Golem Druid deck, which is surely going to see some play. And, um, yeah, great card. More ramp. Like, you'd probably play one of these in, in Ramp Druid. Like, in a Ramp Druid deck, where you're just, like, playing loads of... Are you playing double double uh, Wild Growth and double Maya Keeper? Like, early ramp is so important that you might even just play one of this in a Ramp Druid deck. Jade Idol. Okay, one mana, choose one, summon a Jade Golem, or shuffle three copies of this in card into your deck. So this is pretty, uh, pretty nuts. One mana for a Jade Golem is going to be amazing. Uh, I mean, on turn one, it's a one mana, one, one. But after that, it's just going to be powerful. It's going to be a one mana, two, two, one mana, three, three, four, four, blah, blah, etc. Like, it just gets out of control really quickly. But obviously, the exciting part about this card is that you can shuffle three copies of this in your deck. So, basically, if you're running this in the deck, you have the option to never get to Fatigue. So, losing to control decks is going to be difficult when you're playing this card. I mean, you say that, but then, like, it's you do actually, actually have to draw it, so you do have to actually have to take time to get all your Jade Golems, and, like, you can still be, kill, be killed by, like, o, by, like, OTKs, like Murloc Parlin, for example. But it's a really exciting, really exciting card. Um, like, I really like the thought of playing a, 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 a like, Gadgetson Ear, Gadgetson Auctioneer, Druid, like a heavy cycle Jade Idol Druid. Like, you're playing lots of early game spells to try and survive the early game. Because, like, the issue for a Jade Golem, a Jade Golem Druid is probably going to be, um, not getting overrun early, like, by Zoo and by Midwind Shaman and stuff like that. Um, so, like, you want quite a bit of like, I think you want a really low curve um, in a Jade. In, in my opinion, how I'm going to play Jade Golem feels like a really low curve and a ton of cycle. And, um, yeah. Like, maybe even topping out a Gadgets and Auctioneer as, like, your highest mana card. And obviously the six mana taunt Jade, Jade card. But, yeah, amazing card. Mac, Mac, would you play this in Mildred? You would probably play... If you were playing... Like, I love Mildred. You would probably play one of this in a Mildred. Like, you don't need... You don't need multiple copies in a Mildred. But, um... But, I mean, in a Mildred, the issue... This doesn't... This deck card doesn't just instantly make Mildred insane. Because the issue with Mildred is your lack of board clears and constantly clearing the board. That's... That is one of the main issues with Druid. Like, not being able to clear the board very well. Um... So, yeah. Like, this card doesn't... Don't get me wrong. This card doesn't instantly make Mildred uh, amazing or anything like that. But... Like, I think this would be better in just a Jade Golem Druid, like a mid rangey heavy cycle Jade Golem Druid. It won't actually be a Mill Druid, but uh, yeah, insane card. Uh, if you did want to play some Mill Druid for fun, then yeah, chuck one of these in. You don't need to. Hidden Cash, two on a Hunter Secret. After your opponent plays a minion, give a random minion your hand plus two plus two. So, it's a secret, so you can play it for free with Coat Cloak Tontress. Um... But two mana give a minion plus two plus two isn't that great unless you get it on Rat Pack or Dispatch Kodo. Like those are both insane to buff. Uh, or maybe you get it on Double Kangster. Like it's in a Grimy Goons Hunter deck. It's probably worth playing this card just because you're going to be playing Rat Pack and um, Dispatch Kodo and Double Gangster and these minions that you that like just get extremely more powerful when you buff them. Um, so I really like the idea of like a, a secret. Grimy Goons Hunter deck, where you, you're playing the early secrets, but then you're playing a lot of minions that you want to buff, and, and the buffs and stuff, so. So, yeah, I think, I mean, I mean, it's not amazing. It's not amazing. But in a Grimy Goons deck, it'd be cool to try this out, and might be good enough to play. You're not going to be playing it in a, just to go back to this deck, you're not going to be playing this in a non-Grimy Goons deck. Because, like, Grimy Goons deck is the only deck you're going to be playing this in. Alley Cat, 1 mana 1 1 Beast, Battle Cry, Summon a 1 1 Cat. This card is nuts! Like, this card is nuts! Like, it's like a Living Roots for Hunter, 
but it has the downside of not being reactive. So in the late game, you can't use it as removal or burst. Um, but it's a beast. Um, and it's in a deck that really wants to be ahead early. Um, like this card is really, really good. Ali Cat is great. So in like a mid rangey Hunter deck, this is just going to be better than Fiery Bat. Like Fiery Bat, just you play it and then it just gets pinged off or... Uh, like hero power down or something or like the alley cat can't like you, you just if the enemy uses their hero power they still have a 1-1 one, one beast on the board and obviously the fact it's a beast so with some kill command hand master is great but yeah this card is amazing um, like probably you see this quite a like this played a lot in in, in hunter decks Smuggler's great. One mana, give a random beast in your hand, plus two, plus two. So, one mana, give, a, give something plus two, plus two is good. But it's give something plus two, plus two in the future. Uh, which is not so good. But, it's... If it buffs... Once again, if it buffs one of these, like, Dispatch Kodo or... Um, Rat Pack, then it's well worth it. You play this on turn one, to get a 4-4 four, four Rat Pack on turn three is well worth it. Like, you get a 4-4 four, four, that's almost four one ones when it dies. There's, there'll be other things where you, like, you can play it turn 1, and then you get um, Kindly Grandmother turn 2, and so you have a 3-3 three, three that summons a 3-2 when it dies. Um, so, like, if you're playing this card, you are going to be emptying your hand really quickly. Um, but it's... In a Grimy Goons deck, I definitely think this is good enough to play. Like, you get this on Kodo, like, basically any of the things you want to get it on, and it's pretty nuts. Um... Like, just... Uh, yeah. Like, maybe you'd only play it as a one-off. But... But, yeah. I like the card. I think, I think it's decent. Freezing Potion? Zero mana, freezing enemy. Pfft. It's one of those cards where I can't see a deck where you're actually going to play this. Obviously, it interacts with Shatter. You can use this and then use Ice Lance. Um, but are you going to play this in Freeze Mage? Probably not. You can play this in Tempo Mage? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the worst thing about this card is that it's a potion. So the 4 mana 3-3 three, three that gives you a random potion could give you this card, which generally is bad. Like, this is one of the potions you don't want. When there's loads of good potions, like the one that heals for 12, the multiple ones that clear the board, and then there's just this one that freezes an enemy minion. So maybe that's part of the reason it was made so that the 4 mana 3 3 that gives you a potion isn't always giving you something insanely strong um but yeah sometimes if you get like it's one of them where like if you get it from Cabalist home there's definitely sometimes it can be useful hmm like there's times it can be useful but is there a deck that's actually going to fit into probably not is my answer <laughs> Greater Arcane Missiles, 7 mana, shoot 3 missiles at random enemies that deal 3 damage each. So this is like an Arcane Missiles that instead of doing 1 damage to each thing, does 3 damage to each still thing. But you're playing 6 mana more. Um, like in my opinion, this just doesn't seem as good as... Like I would rather play Flame Strike on turn 7 or rather play Firelands Portal on turn 7 than play this. Obviously it could synergize with the new uh, Mage Legendary, where it makes your spell cost uh, 0 mana. But three missiles... I mean, it has the advantage of... Flame Strike can hit multiple things. Firelands Portal can only hit one thing. This could either do multiple missiles onto the same thing. So if they have a 6-6, six, six, you could get two missiles on the same thing. Or if they have lots of two or three health things, you can use it and it'll clear some of the boards. So it has that kind of advantage where it can... It's good in mul like different situations. It can also go face... It can also go face. Seven mana deal... If they have nothing on board, seven mana deal nine damage to their face. Sounds pretty good. Ah, that's kind of made me like it a bit more. <laughs> the fact that it can go face makes me like it a bit more. But yeah, I'm not that excited about this card. Are you going to play this in Arena Mage? I don't know. Because you're probably going to be playing Final Sport on Flame Strike. Can you afford to play this as well? Uh, I would say no. But it's one of those cards where you get it from Cabalist Tome, and you'll probably be pretty happy to get it from Cabalist Tome. But I 
Maybe I'm underrating it. Like, the more I think about it, the more I like it. But generally, it feels like Fallon's Portal and Flame Strike fit more specific roles. And, um, yeah. Cryomancer, 5 mana, 5 5. Battle Cry gain, plus 2 plus 2 if an enemy's frozen. I think this card is pretty bad. Um, 5 mana, 5 5 is bad. And it's going to be really hard to get this off. Like, obviously, you could use it with a 0 mana freeze, where you 0 mana freeze a minion and then play a 5 mana 7 7, which is great. But it's, other than that, it's really hard to freeze something and play this. Like, you can Frostbolt something, but then you have to not kill it. If you Blizzard and play this, I mean, Blizzard or Frost, you can't Blizzard and play this, because you don't have the mana, like, unless you use Emperor or something. Frost Nova and play this, mm, sounds, it's like, what deck are you even going to be playing that in? Like, I don't think I'd play this in Reno Mage. I don't, I don't think this card's good enough. It's just going to be a 5 mana 5-5 five, five, almost all the time. So, yeah, I don't like this card. Sweet Trickster, 3 mana zero seven 7, spell damage plus 1, and it's a demon. Like, I do actually really like this card. What deck are you going to play this in? I have no idea. I mean, it has the, I like that you can coin it on turn 2, and then turn 3 you have a 3 damage demon wrath. That sounds pretty juicy. But, um, but yeah, I like the high health spell damage minion. In Warlock, are you going to be playing this, though? Probably not. Like, what spells do you have? Do you have, like, Mortal Coil... Do you really want to be using this with, um, I mean, you can use it with Demon Fire. Like, Demon Fire is the card that could make this playable. Like, this this is really good with Demon Fire. Um, yeah. I mean, also this Priest, like, Priest, you have a, a zero seven 7 minion that you can use Inner Fire on. Play this on turn 4 with Inner Fire, you have a 4 mana 7 7, that's spell damage plus 1. Seems pretty good, but, um, but yeah. I do like the card, but I can't see any deck it's going to fit in. Oh my god, 9 mana 5 4, Mayor Nogginfogger. All targets are chosen randomly. I mean, this card is just an absolute mess. It's like, basically the yog of this expansion, where it's just completely crazy. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, there's no deck you're going to put this card in. I don't, I don't think, anyway. But, um... Yeah, I think this card is very good. It's one of those cards where it's just really funny when you get it from, like... When you play Elise and get it from the Golden Monkey or something like that. But, um... 9 mana, 5, 4. Ugh. Uh, it dies to, like... I mean, you can't target it with spells. Like, you fireball and then it... Fireball it or something, and then it... The thing could hit something else. Uh, it dies to things like Flame Strike, but... Deadly Shot. But, yeah. Then you, this card is just, uh... A bit of a meme. 5 and a 2, 6, red mana worm. Whenever you cast a spell, gain plus 2 attack. When I first saw this card, I was like, ah, oh, it's terrible. But the more I thought about it, like, if you play in a, a rogue deck where you're playing, like, lots of spells, and you're playing, like, Tomb Pillager, so you play Tomb Pillager at turn 4, Tomb Pillager dies, then you play this and coin and play a 1 mana spell, and suddenly you have a 5 mana 6, 6 that can escalate even further. Um, like, 5 mana 6, 6 is, is good, but... It's not amazing. Um, so, like, I, basically, I don't think this god will see play. But I'm, uh, I def I'm definitely going to give it a go in some kind of rogue deck. Um, maybe Druid, maybe not. No. I think Rogue is the only thing I could potentially see this being played in. I mean, 5 and a 4, 6 is weak. 5 and a 6, 6 is good, but not amazing. 5 and a 8, 6 suddenly becomes really good. Hmm. And it's the threat of it. Like, it can scale so quickly. Like, if you if this survives one turn, then you can just go off the next turn with loads more spells. So, uh, I think it's I think this card is better than it looks. But, hmm, probably not gonna see much play. Especially in, like, Druid, where the 5 slot is already so contested. Like, you want to play Zerdrake, Druid of the Claw, Nourish, etc. But, yeah. Hosen Healer, 4 mana 2, 6, Power Cry, Restore, Minion to full health. I really like this in a, uh, a Priest deck, uh, where you play into Blade Master turn 3, and then heal it turn 4. Um, also with the 3 mana drop that does damage to itself, you can use it with that. Um, so I do like this card, and maybe some kind of Inner Fire Priest. Other than Inner Fire Priest, I can't see any deck that's going to be played in. Um... Fight Promoter. Battle Cry, if you control a minion with 6 or more cut. If you control a minion with 6 or more health, draw 2 cards. I think this card is really good. 
So, you're probably going to be playing this in a Grimy Goons deck because it can... If it has six or more health, then it draws two cards. So say you've buffed, you've given it plus two, plus two. You play a six mana six, six that draws you two cards, which is nuts. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be great in some, some Grimy Goons decks. Other than Grimy Goons decks, um, maybe it could be played in something like a Priest, where you have lots of high health minions. Uh, Priest also struggles with card draw, which is another reason to play this card. Um, or maybe Ramp Druid, they have lots of high health minions. Like, they're the three styles of decks I can see this being played in. Either the Grammy Goon stuff with all the buffs, uh, a, a Priest deck, or like a Ramp Druid. They're probably the three where it's most likely to be played. And it's very good. It's very good. The Fire's Cleaner, 6 mana, 5, 7. Battle Cry, Silence, Dominion with Death Rattle. This card is really good. This card is really good. Like, a six, like Silence is... Mm, not very common at the moment like they like in the like in the uh nerfs a while ago silence minions got nerfed um so it sounds like i'm gonna be death rattle so you can't like silence everything you can't silence like Cthulhu or something like that but um but a lot of the time when you are silencing you're si silencing death rattle minions like this is a great counter to sylvanas um gonna be great against also the, the jade golem legendary uh that has death rattle summon a jade golem this, like, I could see this card being played in a load of decks. Um, like, a Reno deck, I think you're 100% playing this card. This card, like, this this card is just really good. Rathian, 6 mana, 4, 5, Taunt, Battlecry, draw cards until you draw one that isn't a dragon. So, 6 mana, 4, 5, Taunt is obviously understarted, but you're always getting one draw, and potentially more. Um, if you always got two draws from this card, it would be... Completely nuts. Like, it would be very, very good if you always got two draws. But in a dragon deck, how many dragons are you actually playing? You're probably playing roughly ten. I uh, was speaking to people about this earlier. So it, you're probably going to... Your first draw is going to be a dragon probably like a third of the time. So one third of the time you'll get two or more draws. Is that worth playing this card? In a deck where you're... I mean, you're not going to be playing this. I don't think you're going to play this in an aggro, part, an aggro dragon deck. But if you're playing a control dragon deck that doesn't have much card draw, then yes, I think you can play this card. Uh, but... But yeah. Like, Dragon Priest doesn't have that much draw. So you could probably play this in Dragon Priest. Um, definitely need to try it, though, because maybe... Maybe you don't need it with the... Uh, with, like, the new 5-mana dragon that discovers a card. You're probably going to be playing that as but that is by Historian. So you do create cards. But, um... This card has really high potential. But, um... Yeah, if you just find yourself only drawing one card from it a lot of the time... It might be a bit... Mm, like, uh, I probably don't need this card. The fact that I was Taunt is a big deal, though. So, yeah. like this card a lot. Ancient of Blossoms, yeah, not much to say about this, just pretty, very average. Street Rise of Escape, 5 and a 4, 6, power right, enemy minions lose stealth, once again, just average. <laughs> like, I mean, they, they seem to be encouraging Rogue to play more stealth stuff, but you're never going to play this card, like, really. Uh, Burgly Bully, maybe you're playing a cast spell, I'd coin to your hand. Really like this card. Um... Could see this being played in maybe uh, a like tokeny druid deck or some kind of rogue deck. Um, maybe even tempo mage, but yeah, I, I do like this card. Like if your opponent has nothing on the board and you just drop this, then they're gonna struggle to remove it without using a spell. Uh, so yeah, I do like this card a lot. Genzo the Shock, 5 mana, 5, 4. Whenever this attacks, both players draw until they have 3 cards. This card is, like, really good. Like, it's like, to me it feels like Jeeves, but way worse than Jeeves. So, like, the best thing about Jeeves is that you you can guarantee the draw, draw when you, when you, you want to play it. The thing about this is that you play this, and then it has to survive until you can, uh, uh, until you can ha draw cards with it. Um... I think it's definitely, like, things like Egg Druid and Beast Druid, for example, uh, like, basically decks that empty their hand really quickly. Um, I think you're definitely going to play this card. Like, it's it's definitely a really good card. 
Like, because your opponent is forced to kill it. Like, if they don't kill it, you're going to get draws from it. Um, so, I do really like this card for an aggressive deck that wants to refill their hand. I like mainly thinking of just aggressive druid decks where they empty their hand within. Like, Innovate lets you empty your hand really quickly. Maybe Rogue as well. Like, Rogue a rogue deck with, like, the counterfeit coin now where you're going to empty your hand really quick and then you can play this to refill your hand. Um, they're probably the style of decks you, you'd probably see this card in. And... I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Naga Corsair, 4 mana 5 4, Pirate, Battlecry, give you a weapon plus 1 attack. So this is okay. Like, it's, it's way more of like a mid rangey pirate card, whereas in a, it feels like the current pirate decks, you just want the pirate decks to be really aggressive. Like, um, like Pirate Warrior seems like it's going to be really, really strong. Uh, and but this just feels way too slow for Pirate Warrior. Like Pirate Warrior just wants to be really aggressive, and this isn't aggressive enough. Aggressive enough. Like you'd rather, much rather play Corcoran on turn four than this. Um. So yeah, I mean maybe a rogue, a pirate rogue is gonna be like with the new pirate card as well that we'll come on to. Maybe a pirate rogue will be slightly slower than a pirate warrior, and this card would maybe see play, but. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely not a bad card. A 4 and a 5-4 that's a pirate that has an upside. It's, it's definitely not bad, but is it good enough to play? Not in Pirate Warrior, in my opinion. Rogue. I mean, I think maybe you would play this in Pirate Rogue, but I don't think Pirate Rogue is good enough. Yeah, we'll see. Daring Port, 4 and a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever your opponent draws a card, game plus one plus one. I really don't like this card. So it, it's it's basically like you it both gets buff if you play something like naturalize and draw your opponent cards then you can get this really buffed really big. But in a mill deck, in a mill deck you don't want to play this card. You don't want to play a, a de just dead minions. Like say you play naturalize, they do draw two cards, and then they draw a card at the start of their turn. This becomes a four mana six six. Like you, I wouldn't even play a four mana six six in a even though a four mana six six is nuts. I wouldn't play a four mana six six in a in a mill druid deck. Or a mill rogue deck. A mill any deck. I don't like this card. <laughs> Sergeant Sally. 3 minute 1 1. Death I'll deal damage equal to this minion's attacked or enemy minions. So this card is uh, really nice. Great in more of the kind of mid rangey, slower Grimy Goons decks where you buff this. Like a Grimy Goons Paladin, I can definitely see this seeing play. Um, you buff it to like a 3-3 three, three maybe, and then you play it and it dies to 3 damage to... The, like, the fact that it's to just enemy minions as well, like it doesn't damage your own enemy, own minions, that's a massive deal, like it's really good. Um, you can also do combos with it, like use Power of Worming on it in, in, uh, in Warlock and stuff like that. So yeah, I really like this card, really strong. We'll probably see quite a bit of play. Blubber Baron, I strongly dislike this card. 3 mana 1 1, whenever you summon a Battle Prime minion while it's in your hand, gain plus 1 plus 1. Like, if it was in your deck and it got plus 1 plus 1 while it was in your deck, I think that would be good. Um, because, like, Dragon decks, for example, play a lot of Battle Cries. Uh, Reno decks play a lot of Battle Cries. And, yeah. It, it would be the same thing as, similar to Think from below, where it's. it's you have a. So you can you you can get like a three mana maybe six six or seven seven like somewhere in the mid late game, but you're gonna have to be running a lot of battle cries and it's just gonna sit in your hand like if you ever draw this it's gonna sit in your hand until you've played at least three battle cries which is gonna take a long time. Um, like I just think this card is pretty bad to be honest. Yeah. Guys, and so like two and a two two battle cry restore two health. So it looks quite nice, but it's just a voodoo doctor that costs one more mana that has one more health. Like you'd rather play voodoo doctor than this card, right? Hmm. I do think voodoo doctor is underrated, though. I do think Vo voodoo doctor is one of the better one, one definitely one of the better neutral one drops in the game. But the thing is that you never want to play it on turn one because you never want to heal on turn one. Hmm. But yeah, I don't think this card's going to be played. Small time Buccaneer. One mana, one, two. Has plus two attack. We have a weapon equipped. Pirate. This card's nuts. 
Like, this card is just gonna make pirate... Uh, pirate... Like, this... <sighs> like, pirate decks already have a lot of early aggression. So consider this a pirate warrior. You... Okay, so what do you do? Your turn one... Your opponent does, like, something average turn one. Um, say your turn and pa opponent passes turn one. And then you do Nazoth's first mate. Um, that is a 1-1, one, one, gives you a 1-3 weapon. And then you coin this, so you get a 3-2 pirate. Also, the Nazoth's mate will have pulled patches. So, basically, you're going to have a 1-1. One, one, a 1-1 one, one with charge. A 3-2 and a 1-3 weapon. All on your first turn. Which is absolutely bonkers. Like, the things you can do with this card is nuts. Like, there'll be times where you have this on turn one and you're like, Oh, I don't have a weapon. I don't want to play this card. Um, and obviously, based on your situation and your current hand, you can decide whether it's right to play this or not. But, um, but yeah, this card is good. This card is very good. Weasel Tunneler, 1-1-1-1, one, 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 Death Arch, shove this mini new opponent's deck, and it's a beast. This card's just such a meme, man. Like, what the... Like, I do like it, because it's like Excavated Evil, where you shuffle a card into your opponent's deck that they don't want to draw. Um, but you have to play a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one yourself to, for that to happen in the first place. So, yeah, I... I like, if you... Like, take Beneath the Grounds. I think Beneath the Grounds is way better than this, where you, you're putting stuff in your opponent's deck that it stops Reno because you're putting multiple copies. Like, this doesn't stop Reno, unless you play two of it, and then they don't draw either of them, but... Um, yeah. Just a meme. I like the idea of it, though. I like the idea of it. Cabal Songstealer. 5 and a 5-5, five, five, Battlecry Silence Dominion. Very good card. There's a lack of silence in the game at the moment. Um, in a Reno Priest, I think you're definitely going to play this card. Um, are you going to play any other other Priest deck other than Reno Priest? I'm not sure. But Reno Priest, I think you're definitely going to play this card. Silence is really strong. Although at the same time, uh, Spellbreaker is a 4 mana 4-3. Four, so you're basically just playing 1 extra mana for plus 1 attack, plus 2 health. Which is okay. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's good, I guess. I think it's good. I think it's good. I mean, one thing is that Priest has... Priest has a lot of competition in the 4 slot. Uh, whereas not so much competition in the 5 slot. So yeah, I think you're going to play this card in Reno Priest. Hmm. I like it. 4 mana, great healing potion. Restore 12 health to a friendly character. So, firstly, the 4 mana 3 3 that gives you a random potion in your hand, it would be absolutely amazing to get this card from that from the 4 mana 3 3 in Reno Lock or Reno Mage, because they both really struggle with healing. So that is one reason why I love this card. It's great for the for the 4 mana 3 3 guy. That I can't remember its name. But um But Restore 12 Health to a friend. I also was thinking, oh, restore 12 health to a Friendly character, like, or you could use it with Orknai, where you could do 12 damage for 4 mana, which is absolutely bonkers. But it's specifically, then I realised it says specifically to a friendly character. So, you could do 12 damage to yourself if you want, but I don't think you're going to want to do that. Um, 12 health for 4 mana is a lot, though. Like, it's, a, it's a really good, it's a really good heal. Um, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five pirate, lucky do buccaneer, battle cry, if your weapon has at least 3 attack, gain plus 4, plus 4. Like, so it's prob- if your weapon has at least three attack, like, you have Deadly Poison to buff your weapon, you have Sassy Squid Face, which you could play in, like, a mid-rangey pirate rogue. Um, you could be playing Assassin's Blade, but... I mean, 6 mana 9-9 nine, nine is good, but it's not, like... Firstly, you have to have a three attack weapon, which is... Yeah, it's definitely doable. But I don't feel like Pirate Rogue has enough has enough tools. Hmm. I mean, maybe the counterfeit coin could help in a Pirate Rogue deck. But yeah, I like. I mean, I like. I do like that they're trying to encourage different types of, of rogue. Like Pirate Rogue is kind of be becoming more and more of a possibility. There's also the new one mana Pirate and Patches, which are both great. Like maybe Pirate Rogue could actually be good because of a few of these cards. But yeah. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm so so about this card. I'm so so. Shadow Sensei. 4 mana 4 4 backfire gives a stealth minion plus 2 plus 2. So it's like. Ugh. Like, 4 mana 4 4 give a minion plus 2 plus 2 is really good. But you have to have a stealth minion. I mean, you have the ideal world where you play the 3 mana 5 1 with stealth, and then you play this the turn after, and then you have a 7 3 on this. But, um, yeah. I think they'll need to introduce a few more stealth minions for this to be played. I mean, this is actually pretty good with, you know, the 3 mana 2 2 Divine Shield? Uh, I can't remember its name. But there's a neutral 3 mana 2 2 that's Divine Shield and stealth. So you play that on turn 3, and then you play this on turn 4, and then you suddenly have a 4 4 with Divine Shield and this, which is actually really powerful. Hmm. You have Conceal in Rogue. Like, I, I don't think this card is as bad as it looks. Like, when I first, when I think when a lot of people first looked at this card, they were just like, ah, oh, it sucks. But there are definitely things you can do with it that are, are, are good. Also, there's a new 5 5 minion that has stealth. Ah, maybe a mid rangey stealthy rogue is. could be a, a thing. I mean, it's not going to be tier 1. Probably not going to be tier 2. But, <laughs> but it, it, it could be a thing, maybe. Uh, I like that they're trying to encourage more stealth. Because stealth isn't really something that we've seen in the meta that much lately. But, um, yeah. They probably need to bring out one or two more cards that encourage you to use stealth. Shadow. Oh, so here's the other one I was talking about. Shadow Rager. 3 mana, 5 one stealth. So, just better than Magma Rager, but it still dies to Maelstrom Portal, Ravaging Ghoul, etc, etc. You'd probably rather just play the 3 mana, 4, 2 stealth panther so that it doesn't die to these 1 damage AoE effects. Uh... Yeah, interesting, but I don't think it's going to see any play. Um, have I already spoke about Jade Shuriken? I can't remember. But basically, I think this card's really good for a Jade Golem deck. Really good. Really good for a Jade Golem Druid. I mean, Rogue. Jade Swarmer. Um, 2 minute 1 1 Stealth. Death Rattles on the Jade Golem. So, this is really good as well. Like, you play this on turn 2, and then turn 3, you used the Raptor on it. And that's and then you just get insane and that's just like insane tempo. Like you get the one one from this, and then you get the two two from the raptor, and then you're well on your way with Jade Golems already. So yeah, I really like this card. Um Yeah, really good for a Jade Golem. Like maybe you're even gonna be playing like a maybe an Azoth Jade Golem rogue. I mean it'll probably be a fairly aggressive rogue or like tempo -y rogue, and then you just have one big card that's Nazoth. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Gadget and Fairy Man. 2 mana 2 3 combo return a friendly minion to your hand. Uh, I don't really know why they printed this card. Like, we already have the 2 mana 3 2 version of this. That's a neutral. Um, that doesn't even need a combo, so. Yeah. It seems strange to me. Jade Chief Team. 7 mana 5 5. Battle Cry Summon a Jade Golem. Give it Taunt. Uh, I mean, it seems like Jade Golem Shaman isn't <clears throat> isn't going to be as good as Jade Golem Druid or Rogue. This card is very slow. It feels a lot less likely that Jade Golem Shaman's going to be a thing. Like, the issue is, like, the limited amount of Jade Golems, that you can get. Hmm. Like, you would have to be a Control Shaman. But I feel like there's way better types of Control Shaman. Like, I feel like Nazoth Shaman is going to be way better. Especially with the new Shaman Legendary. Shaman Le new Shaman Legendary is pretty OP. Here he is, White Eyes, 5 and a 5 5, Taunt, Death Rattle, Shuffle the Storm Guardian into your deck. Does it show you what the Storm Guardian is? No. So, Storm Guardian is a 5 mana 10 10 Taunt. So, basically, in the Zoth Shaman, this, is card, this card is like your dream. This is like your dream card for the Zoth Shaman. Another powerful Death Rattle minion that's defensive, because that's Taunt, and gives you an insane tempo play later in the game. So, in the Zoth Shaman, you're already going to be playing lots of card draw. Well, probably. Well, I would. Because you just want to cycle really fast and then play your 
taunt minions and then I mean play your death rattle minions and then play this off and then you have a lease or something for if you still need threats. But um mana, five mana ten ten taunt is really good. A five like in a control this is like the dream for a control shaman deck. Are you gonna play this in mid range shaman? Probably not. Uh -huh. Midrange Shaman just doesn't need it. You don't have as much draw in Midrange Shaman either. Um, like, obviously it's a death round, not a battle cry, so it can be silenced. Um, but yeah, amazing for Control Shaman. And Control Shaman is already good. 5 mana, 10, 10, Torn. And the 10, 10, Torn doesn't have Overload. Like, in, in, in Shaman, you could already have, like, Earth Elemental, 5 mana, 7, 8, Torn. But then you have the downside of being Overloaded for 3. So if you draw the 5 mana, 10, 10, Torn, you're gonna have some insane tempo. Tempo play with, like, Ellie Destruction, Lava Shock, and then play your 5 mana, 10, 10, Torn onto an empty board. Like, pretty insane. So, yeah. Amazing for Control Shaman. I mean, maybe you could play this in mid-range Shaman. It just doesn't seem needed, though. You just don't need it in mid-range Shaman. Like, you already have all the tools you need. And you don't have much as much card draw, so you're not going to be finding the Storm Guardian that often. So, yeah, probably not going to play a mid-range Shaman. But every single control Shaman, this card is nuts. Also, another thing to mention is that you can get this from Firelands Portal. You get this from Firelands, Firelands Portal, this is definitely the best, or one of the best to get. Um, especially if you're playing a Tempo Mage with lots of cycles. So you play Firelands Portal, get the 5-5 five, five Taunt, then it dies, you get the 10-10 ten, ten Taunt in your deck, and you're playing lots of draw, so you can find the 10-10 ten, ten Taunt really quickly. Bam, 10-10 ten, ten Taunt. Very good. <laughs> Call in the finishers, 7-4-1-1 Murlocs, yeah, just... Good in a Murloc deck, like with all the buffs, like obviously they're better than 1-1s. One better than a normal 1-1 one -one because you have all the Murloc synergies. Also good with any, everything is awesome. Try to just make sure I remember the name of it. But um, is Murloc Shaman going to be a thing? I don't think so. But definitely good for a Murloc Shaman. Like that's like like there's no doubt about that. Genie hmm. Water Speaker Four Mana Three Six Power Cry Restore Six Health Overload One. I wish this was like a neutral card or, so, or almost a neutral like. This is a really good card. Um, like, it's very similar to Healbot. Uh, so it's essentially a 5 mana... You're essentially sending 5 mana for a 3-6 that restores 6 health, which is great. So it's like Healbot, but plus 3 health, minus 2... Uh, minus 2 healing. But Shaman already has good healing, so you already have Healing Wave and Halazeal. Like, in a control sh Shaman deck, maybe you play this card. Um... You probably would play this card. Like, the fact that you get a nice body as well. Um, it's a, definitely a good card for a, a slower Shaman deck. I like it, but I kind of wish that they'd made this kind of thing maybe a neutral. 4 mana Lotus Illusionist. After this minion attacks the hero, transform into a six, random 6 plus money in. 4 mana 3 5. I mean, it's one of those cards where, like, it feels so bad that you probably. that you wouldn't even play this in Evolve Shaman. Um, I mean, if it gets to attack, it's great. You, there is some really good scenarios you could get, but there's also some bad ones. Like, as you know with Moonglade Portal, Moonglade Portal can be very swingy. Sometimes you can get Sylvanas, sometimes you can get Corrupted Seer, the 2 mana 2 3. Now there's also a 6 mana 1, I mean, the 6 mana 2 3. Now there's also a 6 mana 1 1 you can get. So, uh, I mean, there are lots of good 6 drops. Sunwalker, Dark Arakoa. Emperor, Cairn, Sylvanas are some examples, but seems pretty bad to me, this card. Jade Lightning, 4 mana deal, 4 damage, 7 Jade Golem. So, kind of, it's... Kind of makes you feel like Jade Golem, if there is a Jade Golem Shaman deck, it's going to be a control deck, because you're going to be, like, removing, like, a removal. It feels very much like a removal, like you're removing something and something a minion. Um... But I don't feel like Jade Golem Druid Shaman is going to be that good. Yeah, it's not a it's not an overly powerful card. In fact, it's pretty weak in my opinion. I mean, there's there's lots of things that deal for, that 
with four damage, there's lots of things that die to four damage, like Tomb Pillager, Frothing, Totem Golem. There's lots of minions in the meta that die to four damage, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, your opponent plays Tomb Pillager, and you play this and summon a Jade Golem. <coughs> like, that's okay. That's okay. So that's not terrible. Devolve. I strongly dislike this card. Two mana, transform all enemy minions into random ones that cost one less. Shaman already has some of the best board clear in the game in Ellie Destruction, Lightning Storm, Elstrom Portal. They have some very powerful AoEs. Um, so your opponent has a big board, you just want to use your one AoEs. I mean, you could devolve their board and then use an AoE, but there's so much, like, random look. Like, you could give them some Death Rattle stuff, you could give them stuff with Divine Shield. You have no idea what you're actually going to give them. Just that everything's going to be one mana less. So it could end up backfiring sometimes. Um, why would you play this card? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's good against... If they've buffed a minion, and then you can... Devolving it removes the buff and turns it into something that should be... I mean, you say weaker. It's not always going to be something that's weaker. Like, you transform a, a six mana 1-1 one, one into a... 5 mana, 5-5, five, five. that's not weaker at all. So, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not... It's not as straightforward as your... Say they have a 5 mana, 5-5, five, five. it's not as straightforward as, oh, I'll devolve to 5 mana, 5-5 five, five to a 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. And even then, it's just... They have to have a big board for this to be good. Shaman has great board glitz already. I don't like this card. Jade Claws, Tip of the 2-3, Power Christ, on a Jade Golem. So you're going to play this in a Jade Golem deck... But Spirit Claws is so much better than this card. Like, Spirit Claws is so insane. Um, once again, Jade Golem Shaman feels more underwhelming than the other two Jade Golem classes. Um, which is a good thing, because Shaman has... Shaman's just really strong right now. Um, so, it's definitely a good thing that it's they're getting weaker cards than the other two. Um... You're going to play in a Jade Golem deck, a Jade Golem Shaman. Is a Jade Golem Shaman going to be good? In my opinion, probably not. Very, very okay. Very okay. Fighters Keepers. One mana, discover a card with Overload, Overload 1. So I do like this. For, like, for a Control Shaman deck... Um, like, you can get the Overload card that fits your situation, you can get, uh, AoE, you can get Burst Damage in Lava Burst, you can get a Taunt Minion in Earth Elemental, like, there's, there's lots of, uh, like, there's a variety of stuff you can get. So in a Control Shaman deck, I might consider playing maybe one of this, um, like, Discover's obviously great for finding things that fit your situation, but because it's Overload 1, you're essentially playing, playing 2 mana to discover a, a card. Playing 2 mana to discover a card doesn't feel that great. So... Mm. If you're even playing it in a control deck, you probably ain't going to play one of it. And would you even play it in a control deck? I don't even know. It's a very, it's a very average card. Maybe worse than average, but... But Discover is always better than it looks. So... Yeah. 9 mana, 7 9 demon. Cruelly unshackled. Battle cry if your deck has no duplicates, summon all demons from your hand. So, in a Reno lock, are you going to play this card? Initially, I was like, yes, you're going to play this card. But the more I've thought about it, the more I don't like this card. Um, like, what demons do you even want to pull from your hand? Like, it, it, to play this in a. Firstly, it has to be a Reno deck. Um, well, what do you call it? A Highlander deck. Um, but... A lot of the demons... Like, Doom God is great to pull. So you play this, you pull Doom God, it's great. You pull Imp Gang Boss, it's okay. Everything else is very average. Um... Are you going to play Felguard in your deck as a defensive tool just so that this can play Felguard? Like, I'd say maybe. There's also the new 3 mana 5-5. Five, five. But it feels like you're going to have to play all these demons that you don't really want in a 
reno lock in a reno lock you want a very it's like you want it to be like reactive and like very controlly lots of board clears um and ways of dealing with enemy threats and then yeah it just and then playing your own big threats i feel like there's just no good demons to pull that's 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 my issue with it like there's no great demons to pull like, in Wild, you pull, like, Mal'Ganis and stuff like that. It's insane. But, uh, if you pull Jiraxus, maybe that's okay. I mean, it's good, unless you actually want to use the Jiraxus to, to heal. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Definitely has potential, but the more I've thought about it, the more I don't like it. 6 minus 6, 6, Cabal Trafficker. At the end of your turn, add a random demon to your hand. Um... Uh, It's okay. It's slow. Uh, can you afford to play slow cards in Reno Lock? A lot of the time the answer is no. Um, I mean, maybe a non-Reno Lock, a demon deck, just a demon deck, but... Mm. Demon deck's going to be taking a lot of damage and not having any heal in the form of... Without, without Reno or some other heal stuff. Um, like, I don't think I'd play this card in Reno Lock. Like, I feel like the the non-demon form of Arena Lock, without this, without Cruel, just seems, sounds better to me than a, a demon Arena Lock. Demon Arena Lock has too many cards that you just don't want to be playing. <laughs> Basically. But yeah, it's definitely an interesting card. I like, I like the, uh, the fact that you can get another Draxus is really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely not a terrible card. Nice value. But you don't really need value in Arena Lock. Formula 5 for a Crystal Reaver, Battle Cry, give you a Demon's plus one plus one. I think this is pretty bad. Um, I mean, it's great after Imp Gang Boss. Like, you play Imp Gang Boss, it trades into something, and then you play this. Imp Gang Boss gets buffed, and the 1-1 one, one Imp gets buffed. But other than with Imp Gang Boss, it's like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, not gonna play this in Reno Lock. Not gonna play this in Zoo. Like, it feels like they're trying to make you make a more mid rangey demon deck be a thing, but there's just. It just, just doesn't feel like you have the tools. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think it's got uh, very average. Blast Crystal Potion, form on a destroyer. A minion and one of your mana crystals. I don't really like this card. Um, in Reno Lock, maybe you can play it as a one-off, but... You play on turn four, like, giving up one of your mana crystals on turn four is so terrible. Like, you play this later in the game when you're on ten mana, like, that's fine. Like, you're okay playing, the, you, you're pretty happy destroying a minion for four mana when you have ten mana. Like, you can, like, play a six drop, play, like, Emperor, and then play this. Or you can play Sylvanas, and then play this, and destroy your own Sylvanas. Like, this definitely has use, uses later in the game. But you never, like, you feel so terrible playing this on turn four. Um, uh, in Arena Lock, maybe you'd play it. Like, you, you have one Siphon Soul. Would you rather play Big Game Hunter? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Personally, I don't think I would actually play this card in Arena Lock. But it's a nice option to have, but... Mm. <laughs> Three minute five five unlicensed apothecary. Whenever you summon a minion, do five damage to your hero. Demon. I really like this card actually. Like, so you play a three minute five five, really strong. Um, you play one minion after it. I think you're okay with that. You play two minions and you take ten damage. You're definitely not okay with that. But it's a three minute five five. Like it's a big body. It should. Your opponent will... Like, it can trade in lots of stuff. Like, say you were to play this in Arena Lock. You play Doomsayer turn 2. Then you play this turn 3. It's really, really good. 
I mean, it feels like you can't, you can't really play this in a, in a zoo deck because you play so many minions that you're just going to kill yourself, like, really quickly. Like, you have things like Imgang Boss and, like, Death Rattle minions and lots of cheap minions to flood the board. You play this in, in a zoo deck and you just kill yourself really, really fast. Um, so, it, you can't play in zoo. But I do like the card. It's encouraging more of this mid-rangey demon thing that doesn't feel good enough to me, but this is the kind of card that could definitely help it. Pubic Defender. Oh, Public Defender, I mean. <laughs> Two mana, sorry, seven taunt. So I, I like, with Bolster and the, new, and the new two mana warrior spell that gives a taunt in your hand plus three plus three. Like, if you use that on it and you get a two mana, three, ten taunt, well, a four mana, three, ten taunt because you're playing two mana to buff it. Four mana, three, taunt, ten taunt is insane. Like, I kind of like the idea of a mid-rangey Bolster Warrior. Like, it's, this new expansion is... Like, I've tried Bolster Warrior loads of times, it's never really been good enough, but the the new cards are definitely pushing it to almost... Well, but making it better, basically. This is great, and the 5 mana taunt is really good. The new uh, give a taunt minion plus 3 plus 3 is good. Um, yeah, oh, Ali Armorsmith, that's a 5 mana one, that's really good. Yeah, so I, I like I like this card. Like, you use buffs on this, and it's really good against super aggressive decks. Like, if aggro is... If there's a lot of aggro on ladder, this kind of card will be great. Oh, along with Ali Armorsmith. 2 minute 2 2 Hobot, Grapple Hammer. Battle Cry, give all weapons in your hand and deck plus one attack. So when I first saw this card, I was like, oh my god, this card's insane. I'm just going to put this in every warrior deck. But then I went through the different types of warrior decks and I thought, okay, in Pirate Warrior, I'm playing two Fiery War X and two Arcanite Reaper. So I've only got four weapons in my whole deck. Uh, might not even be worth playing this because it's not aggressive enough. Um, in Control Warrior. Yeah, it's probably worth playing mainly for... I mean, you have Gorhal, you have two War Xs. This card is really, it's really interesting, because it's like, is this actually worth playing? It's actually, it's easy to just say, oh yeah, it's great. And it's good. But, is it aggressive enough for uh, an aggressive deck? I'm not 100% convinced for Pirate Warrior. Like, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced I play this in Pirate Warrior. Like, if you're playing a deck with like six weapons, five or six weapons, I think, yeah, sure. If you end up playing the new Brass Knuckles card, if you're playing a deck with lots of weapons with like Fire War Axe, Brass Knuckles, Arcanite Reaper, then oh, of course. But. Oh, you also have the five mana Banes. Banes, what's it called? Fool's Bane? Fool's Bane. It's really good with that. It's really good with Fool's Bane. Yeah, this is a really good card. But there are some that it's 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 not just an auto include in every warrior deck, which I initially thought it was. I initially was like, oh yeah, it's an auto include in every warrior deck. But then you do have to be a bit like, oh okay, actually there's some warrior decks where mm, I I might not need it, and it might just be just putting it in for the sake of it. Two mana, sleep with the fishes, deal three damage to all damage minions. I don't like this card. I like the picture, but um, I don't like this card. But like, if you do, like, Ravaging Ghoul and then play this, it's really good. It is really good. Like, against Shaman, for example, playing Ravaging Ghoul and then playing this, it's like a 5, it's another 5 mana AoE. It's like 5 mana deal 4 damage to everything, but it's a combo, and you, and you get a 3-3. Three, three. Like, this definitely has uses. It's also, it can also be used, like, not as, like, a full board clear. Say you have a couple of enemy minions damaged and you kill like two minions with this card that's really good as well like killing two minions for two mana is really good um they have to be damaged though that's like that's the awkward part about it like you're gonna have to be playing a decent amount of like whirlwind effects or effects that do one damage like blood to Icarus and stuff 
So when I first looked at the card, I thought it's terrible. But the more I've thought about it, the more I actually think it's it's actually pretty good. In in you're gonna play some control warrior. I would actually say maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's the end of my card review. That is the, this is the first time that I've done a, a card review before an expansion. Um, so this is the fourth and final part of my card review. And um, I really enjoyed it. I like giving my predictions and opinions on which card is going to be good, which is not going to be good, which have potential. Uh, so yeah, um, thanks for watching. Let me, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with my opinions in the comment section below. Um, I'm really excited to make loads of new decks, loads of new cool deck lists. Uh, I post all my deck lists on my Twitter, so um, go check that out. <laughs> and, um, I stream six days a week, so if you want to watch me play some cool decks, then feel free to watch me on Twitch. Um, but yeah, can't wait to make loads of new decks. Super excited! Thank you for watching. See you later.